welcome to the Alamosa Library feature of the Poets in the Library series. Actually, the full name of this library is the Alamosa Robert L. Murphy Library. We're so happy to be here on the west side. My name is Mary Oishi. I'm the current Poet Laureate of Albuquerque, and today's featured poet is Michelle Otero. She served as the Poet Laureate of Albuquerque from 2018 to 2020. She is the author of the poetry collection Bosque, the essay collection Malinche's Daughter, and the forthcoming Vessels, a memoir of borders. Her work has appeared or is forthcoming on the Modern Love podcast, NPR's Code Switch, and in New Mexico Magazine, Shenandoah, and the Best of Brevity Anthology. She is a member of Macondo Writers Workshop. She is also an amazing human being and my friend. I'm so pleased to introduce Michelle Otero. Thank you, Mary, for inviting me to read for the libraries. Um, I grew up loving public libraries, and this is one of the rare occasions where I actually get to read some library poems that I created when um, I was Poet Laureate from 2018 to 2020. Um, so the first I'll read, um, I created for Friends of the Library when they were celebrating their anniversary. And this poem is called, You Make the Library Friend. And I think it speaks to what libraries do for us, um, how they open entire worlds to us. You make the library friend. You make the library Rio Grande, swollen in monsoon, young willow rooting deep, finding home. You make the library bosque, morning mist rising with crane, woodpecker, waxwing. You make the library Abuela's Kitchen, where there's always strong coffee, a seat at the table, and stories of who we are. In your hands, library is mud, mortar, terron, blockhouse, cool in summer, sturdy, safe. Library is front porch guitar, percussion hands, song we know by heart. In your care, library is medicine, filling small hands with books to keep. With you, library is Pueblo, the people where we come to know ourselves. And uh, when you are a poet laureate, you get to write many occasion poems. So this one is a poem for another library, uh, the newest library in Albuquerque, I think, which is in uh, the International District. Um, so for those of you from that part of town, you'll hear a reference to the Caravan East. Breaking ground. Caravan East sign says, breathe in this moment. We break ground in this place where we cumbia to Al Hurricane, two-step to Glen Campbell. Breathe in this moment when we stand together by standing apart, holding our touch for another time. We break ground in this place of ghosts, strong souls spiriting us across oceans, whispering stories in wind. This ground of sawdust-colored floors, this ground, alluvial plain off sandias, where roots of corn, bean, squash, compact under asphalt, converge on Route 66, journeys beginning or end or just passing through. We break ground to say, stay with me, sit, tell your story. Journeys across states over continents, through cloud and ocean se encuentran aquí en la mesa made of books. We breathe in this moment, break ground, break bread, pho and fufu, fry bread, fideo, ashak and arroz con pollo. In this moment, we stand together by standing apart. My mask is your shield, your mask is mine. It won't always be this way. We break ground to grow something new, build from seeds planted before we were born. We water shoots pushing through concrete. We are all colors of sunrise over sandias, welcoming us home. <laughs> okay, so this next poem is uh, Sestina, and I think of stories that all the libraries hold and um, one of the stories I'm really fascinated by is the story of uh, the Spaniards encountering the indigenous people in what is now Mexico. And I'm especially intrigued by that story of Cortez and, um, and, and, and of the idea that Cortez was somehow mistaken for the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl. So I think some of what we can do in poetry is really interrogate some of those stories and write our own stories. This poem is a Sestina, so you'll hear repeating end words. Sestina Azteca. 
I don't know if I buy that story about the Aztecs mistaking Cortez for the plume serpent Quetzalcoatl. What with the stain of conquest ground into his beard, how he couldn't speak Nahuatl. He was the first Spanish blood coyote in the new world. Not the canine coyotol, but trickster, story spinner, speaking through Malinche, plumed tongue from her lips to Moctezuma's ears, ground corn passed around their circle, an offering. Scribes, their fingers stained red and black, captured this history on amate bark, stains like coffee woven through its fibers, texture of coyote pelt. Scribes sat on the ground, Moctezuma on his throne, telling the story of his people. We come from the center of the earth. We plume the dead who turn to hummingbirds. I am Tlatuani, he who speaks for his people. They were beautiful, market prostitute with red stained teeth, acupuncturist with turkey feathers and fish spines, warriors, coyote slender and swift. We know the story, what happens to Tenochtitlan, how it all sinks into the ground. Today, her descendants grind teeth and bones, speak incomplete stories. We think we know Mexico, policia y políticos with stained hands, migrants pressed atop la bestia, coyote prey. Only feathered beasts fly the border, the rest snatched from their children by a president's plume. The ancestors said, yell into the ground, give it to Tlazolteotl. Like coyote, she walks on all fours. She speaks once a year, eats humanity's filth, our stains. That's a story I can believe. Not a plumed serpent made man who spoke siege, who walked sacred ground and saw only the stain of sin, but coyote woman who eats the worst of us and spits a new story. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to some, um, to my own project when I was the poet laureate and it was all about the bosque. So I did a series of bosque walks and Mary joined and led one of those walks on a really, really cold January day a few years ago. So I'm happy the sun is out today and it's uh, warmer and you know, you can start to feel a little bit of spring in the air. Also very grateful for the snow we got last week. Um, so I'm gonna read a few bosque poems and seed poems. Seed packet for dry land. Wrap in old rags. Plant after last trees, shoulder deep in dark soil. Drop water to survive dry times. How to measure sunlight. How to thrive when late rain. No rain. Elk raid. Frost. You know this. Everything breaks to become what it is. You know this. It is all dry land. When time comes, winnow. Grind into coarse flour, take to river where we are enough. And I will leave you today with um, one of my favorite topics to write about, and that is rain and how precious that resource is to those of us in this landscape. Rain. We remember Isla de Feast Day. Hide drum, dancers pray with their feet. One chin, then another turns to sky. Two gold eagles circle conjuring clouds. One drop, then another. Stillness, except the drum, the dance, the rain. Sunday morning, we cross Central Bridge on foot, called by the same spirit drawing hiking boots, cowboy hats, hard creased dickies, running shorts, pigtails, plastic rosary hanging from a walker, nose rings, Oakland Raiders, tattoos. We stand in silence on the banks of the Rio Grande, pilgrims no less awestruck than John the Baptist converts for the miracle of a river at its highest point in 40 years. For a moment, we forget our thirst. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, that was beautiful as usual. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the manager of the Alamosa Library, Brandon Felix. Please welcome Brandon. Welcome to the Alamosa Robert L. Murphy Library. We are thrilled that you are with us today. We are located at 6900 Gonzales Road Southwest inside the recreational side of the Alamosa Community Center. We are just off of course between Central and Bridge. 
We are grateful to serve the citizens of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County and are the primary service branch for the Alamosa, West Mesa, Pat Hurley, Crestview Bluff, Atrisco Viejo, and Stinson Tower neighborhoods. Although we opened our current doors a mere 20 years ago, we actually trace our origin back almost 60 years to May 24th, 1964, when we opened as the fourth branch of the Albuquerque Public Library. As the Esperanza branch, we were located about a mile northeast of our current location near Central and 57th. On September 25th, 2001, Mayor Jim Baca and then Library Director Eileen Longsworth dedicated this library in conjunction with the opening of the newly constructed Alamosa Community Center. In October of the same year, the city of Albuquerque officially named the branch the Alamosa Robert L. Murphy Library after community leader Robert L. Murphy. Mr. Murphy moved to Albuquerque in 1954 and was stationed at Kirtland Air Force Base, where he served as a military policeman. In 1962, he left the Air Force and joined the Albuquerque Fire Department and served for 27 years. During his lifetime, he was very active with the Boy Scouts of America, his local church, Santuario de San Martin, Alamosa Elementary School, and was a founding member of the Alamosa Neighborhood Association. Mr. Murphy brought many neighborhood treasures to the Alamosa community, including the construction of the Santuario de San Martin Church, the implementation of the Alamosa Multi-Service Center, and the endless devotion he provided to the Alamosa Elementary School. Mr. Murphy passed away on December 1st, 2000. We are a proud part of both the Public Library, Albuquerque and Bernalillo County, and the integrated campus of the Alamosa Community Center, which offers health and social services, recreational opportunities, and educational childcare services to the public. In addition to the indoor facilities offered, there are a basketball court, skate park and BMX course on campus, and Alamosa Park lies just to the west, boasting tennis courts, picnic facilities, and playground equipment. I thank you all again for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the poetry of Michelle Otero, and I thank uh, Mary Wishi for bringing us this series and I invite you to come visit us at the Alamosa Robert L. Murphy Library. Thank you. Thank you for telling us about the Alamosa Library, Brandon. And now we're going to go indoors to have a wonderful time with the five community poets for the Alamosa Library. And now we're indoors with the community poets for the Alamosa Library. We're gonna start this reading with Gina Marcel, Gina Marcel lives in Albuquerque with her family, her rescue horse and dogs. She's a teacher, poet and photographer. She has published poems and photographs in local anthologies and her book is A Fire of Prayer, a collection of poetry and photography. Please welcome Gina Marcel. Thank you so much. I'm gonna start with a quote. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. From the Tao Te Ching by Latsu, translation by S. Mitchell. Here is my original poem titled Like Me. Sometimes sleep sits empty on a brick wall. It doesn't waver or fall. It's thin smoke, anxiety on a string, swaying in a spring breeze more gently than a tire swing, like me. I count how many likes on my poem posted on social media, only one today, six the other day, zero the day before that. And the poems sit empty, unread, unappreciated, unliked, like me. Anxiety takes hold of my breath, holds it hostage, 
sucking life, zipping it up in too tight of jeans until stomach aches and vomit sneaks up the windpipe. Never to escape, but sits there, uncomfortable, like me. Even if my life is uneventful, I still try to make the day worth something. I love the sunrise as much as breath. I love the warmth radiating on my skin, hands in dirt, planting carrot seeds, beets, radishes for their vibrant colors, for their sweet or bitter taste, hoping they take root like me. My roots are not tied down to place, but to memory, to my children, to poems. Even if unread, my name ties them to earth and root is my signature, showing the universe I'm here. Life has meaning. And maybe in that moment that I posted that poem, bravery stood up like me. Sometimes anxiety punches me in the gut, knocks the wind right out of me. And maybe I'll fall. And then again, maybe I won't. Each morning that I wake up, I'm really grateful for another chance. But truly, when I reflect, I don't really need anyone to like me. I just need to love me. Love me. Thank you. Oh, how wonderful. What a great message. Yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Need to love me. I love the ending. I love the whole poem, actually. Thank you, Gina. Okay, we will move on to Jen Givon. And she is a Chicana poet, novelist, and transformational coach, and the recipient of poetry fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts and Penn Rosenthal Emerging Voices. The author of five full-length poetry collections, most recently Belly to the Brutal, out this year from Wesleyan University Press, and the novels Trinity Site, Jubilee, and River Woman, River Demon. Her work has appeared in The New Republic, The Nation, Poetry, and many others. You can learn more at jennifergivon.com. Please welcome Jennifer. Thank you so much, Mary. I'm glad to be here reading with you all. This poem is called, I am dark, I am forest. I carried a bowl of menudo into the forest. I carried my bisabuela tripas, not daring ask whose intestines I carried, con cilantro y radish y cebollo chopped fine. I carried the sewing machine they'd slip stitched her to in the garment district downtown. I carried the forest crackling against asphalt where her chanclas burnt and melted. So I carried her too. I wore no red. I bore no basket. There was no forest, but an avocado tree in the backyard of the house they made her sell to get her Medicare for her diabetes shots. I carried her sugar water. A hummingbird great granddaughter, I carried her flickering. Her black and white screened, I carried her face. The scars her warped esposo left, her granddaughter carried those wounds through the womb. Not wolf, but blue-eyed man, I stirred the menudo, my belly, the pot, scalding into the forest I carried, and that tree I chopped down, chopped into a boat that carried my mother and my bisabuela across the chile red sopa, the blood water broth named her daughter. What forest have we made for her? I cannot see. I carried darkness into that forest and sliced it out. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I'm somewhat breathless after that poem. Wow. There was so much truth in there. Like this is one of those poems I want to rewind and, and watch it again, and then rewind and watch it again, and read it in a book also. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jen. Appreciate that. 
The next poet is Patty Stevens. Patty Stevens wrote a series of poems about immigration to accompany the showing of Evie Jones prints at Remark Gallery called There Are No Maps, Sanctuaries and Survivors. She is published in the 315 Experiment and shares regularly at Bosque Center for Spiritual Living, where she is music director. Please welcome Patty Smith. Thank you. It's really an honor to be here with everyone. This is uh, that collection of poetry that I shared with Evie Jones. There is a moment that exists when one decides to begin the walk, when facing the unknown, pushed by survival and the need to settle under new trees, barks of a different river, a roof or the sky, when all of this desire takes over your feet and one foot in front of the other, you know you've left behind the awful familiar. Your bread is wrapped in your prized possession. That one piece of woven fabric that exists because a person decided to weave it back and forth, one thread at a time. The last thing grabbed was a handful of salt that would be tossed a few grains over the left shoulder at the beginning and end of each day. It was the way she would bless the new earth under her feet that new, unfamiliar earth where she hoped bombs wouldn't explode. This is the whole world in a pocket. Terror, fear, hope, grief, secrets, anger, truth. The memory of kitchen and bed, the ethereal sounds, the echo of colors, the taste of earth, the music, the blurring of the sharp edges, the movement that feels like ghosts claiming space among the living trying to dance. Her back became my world, thick, warm, yeasty back, home to my two-year-old self, straddled wide across the new globe. Her back became my world. I could not speak her name, but the part in her hair that I traced with tiny fingers became my familiar map. Her back became my world. The soft padding of her feet through the hills, the cadence of her gait carved pathways in my soul towards eternity. That sound, that sound, that sound, that sound. Her thick hair spread out on the roadside made a home for her husband and oldest boy child. Her naked breast, the infant girl's dreaming place. Generous breast milk spills from her babe's mouth, runs down and over long, strong ribs into the ground that cradles this family. A gift from one mother to another. The sticky mesquite seeds work their way to her scalp and swell up in her honey hybrid night sweat. A sugary treat when they arrive farther north where chamiso is bitter. This garden she carries runs the length of her spine, sways with her hips that walk to new land, one foot in front of the other. Oh, Patty, that was wonderful. And her name is Patty Stevens. Patty Stevens, I know this from the many times I had Patty on the show with me, <laughs> but she would come in to either talk about a jazz show that she was doing, or she would come in to actually perform and or help me out with a fundraiser when I worked at KUNM. So I know her name and I'm going to be sure you know it even though she was uh, flattered to be called by someone else's name, but her name is Patty Stevens. Thank you, Patty. All right, the next po poet is 
Gabino Noriega. Gabino Noriega is an Albuquerque native, a PhD candidate, educator, and artist. He is also a family man focused on connecting his family to the earth and tradition, traditions of our ancestors. He has performed as a musician and poet in various events locally and regionally. Please welcome Gabino Noriega. First off, I want to tell uh, Mary, thank you so much for having me again. Um, this is always a great um, event and opportunity for us to share um, such amazing uh, talent. And thank you all for, for your wonderful poems before. Um, they're very inspiring um, and I appreciate um, your work and thank you. Um, the poem I'm reading today is called, I Come From Albuquerque's West Side. I come from the West Side, but not just any West Side, but the west side of Burke. I come from the heart and hands of my abuela making arroz con leche and bizcochitos. I come from my noquis remedios and high cheekbones. I come from my mom's loving heart and loyalty. I come from my dad's drive and charisma. I come from my children's thirst of knowledge and belief in me. I come from my wife's strength and will to fight for what's right. I come from the shredding harmonics of metal and the razor sharp words of hip hop. I come from the rancheras on 89.1 and the Motown hits of James Brown and Smokey. I come from learning to count by cleaning beans on my abuela's kitchen table. I come from the life waters of the Rio Grande. I come from the reddish pink frequencies of the Sandias. I come from the power and beauty of the ocean. I come from finding my brother dead in his ranfla when I was five years old. I come from the blackest night sky. I come from the wondrous brown hair of my bride. I come from the darkest pools that are my children's eyes. I come from the ride or die nature of mi familia. I come from the only place where I would love to die. I come from Albuquerque's West Side. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gabino. Reminds me of something Michelle Otero said to me once. It's not where you're born, it's where you choose to die. Uh, so perhaps you were both, huh? Born here, and yes. Yep. <laughs> so thank you so much. That poem actually will be in the anthology of poets uh, from the Poets in the Library series. So all of these poets, even though the rest of them have not gotten their call for submissions yet, um, all of these poets will be invited to submit to the anthology that will be from this whole series of all of the featured and community poets. So if you have not yet read and you are a poet from Albuquerque and you would like to be featured at a, at a public library or and or in the poetry anthology, you kind of need to read for the library in order to be asked to submit, but there will be a published uh, anthology of all of these poets, and it will be published by the city of Albuquerque either later this year or early next year. So just putting that out there for you to consider if you have not yet read for the Poets in the Library series. Anyway, uh, our final community poet, last but certainly not least, is Serena Reyes, and she was born and raised in Albuquerque, and she hopes to have a book about that someday. And um, I'm hoping she will too, and you might too, after you hear this poem. Please welcome Serena Reyes. Hi, um, thank you so much. What a beautiful, beautiful dose of poetry. Um, yeah, so honored to be part of this with you all. Um, thank you. Uh, Mother Burke. Must be hard to raise so many kids. Watch the days boil and burn over the same small pot. Wipe the night from our mouths when we get sick. Pour a heavy spoon of sunrise. In the summer, you feed us watermelon juice. Try to keep track of all our sticky fingers, but some of us slip right through your hands like dry beans. 
We'd rather go out hard than get chewed up. And some go real far. Some you never see again. But we never forget where we come from. Mother, Burke. Some of us wake up at five every morning just to give you a garden. And other days you slice your finger on a gas station rose that smells like cigarettes and you still say thank you. Your hands cracked rough like desert stone in a bucket of gray water and cheap soap begging the rags to be closed again. We know you get tired. We've seen you stumble on the 66 bus with your arms full of groceries and bags under your eyes so heavy you can't even lift your arm to tell the driver to stop. But you are grateful for that food. You've been walking all day and some of us can't even make it home for dinner. You stare at another cold, untouched plate and you throw it so hard at the sky and you leave it there as sharp as a crescent moon and let the clouds cover it up like dirty dishwater. We all keep secrets, but we can't hide from you. And you wish we could hide better so you wouldn't have to know how many kids you've left at the bus stop all night long, tucked in by the breeze of a passing car. How many children do you have tapping their arm to see if anybody's home before they let the stranger in? How many stray dogs beg you to keep them? Maybe there's not enough room in your heart to get every child's name tattooed, but sometimes your skin is like an old graffiti wall. Don't be ashamed of those lines on your face. We've learned to write our own names. You're still the one that teaches us we need to pray. And sometimes prayer smells like spray paint. Sometimes it tastes like rain. Sometimes it looks like a little girl wishing to be a hummingbird. And you need your distractions too. So you stain your lips the color of ripe cactus fruit and sneak out in your bare feet because your yucca spikes stilettos are too loud and we don't see you again until there's only a little bit of night left smudged around your eyes like leftover mascara and the sunrise drapes over you like a worn out party dress. And you don't know if you're dizzy from crying or dizzy from drinking and some crooked man offers to take you home and you say, you, I am home. I am home and I can hear you. Your strange lullaby that creeps around every corner from liquor store to bosque wildflower, voice cracking like caramel glass bottles on the sidewalk. Roasted green chili breath, burke. May you never stop singing. Uh, it almost feels sacrilegious to say anything after that, <laughs> that poem and all of the poems today. Thank you so much. I hope if you, if this is the first time you have watched one of these features from a library, that you have the same goosebumps I do, and that you see what a wealth of talent we have here in Albuquerque. The poets here are amazing. I, I always knew we had lots of poets. When I was inaugurated into this position, I said, if we, if we had a new poet laureate every month, we would never get done. We would never get through them all. And even I, at that time, had no idea how, what, how many great, great poets are here in Albuquerque. So thank you all for participating. And do uh, keep your eyes open. Watch the Albuquerque Poet Laureate Facebook page or uh, keep your eyes open for the next library feature. We are going to get through all of the public libraries in Albuquerque. This series is to highlight the great treasure we have here in our 19 public libraries that are just phenomenal throughout the city and our amazing poets, which I don't need to brag them up anymore. I'm sure you 
they gave you plenty of evidence today. So thank you so much. If you're interested in reading for another feature, you can contact me at ABQ poet laureate program at gmail.com it's there on the screen abq poet laureate program at gmail.com thank you so much we'll see you next time